Welcome to Miss Politice's Schools for Well-Mannered Ladies. Here you will learn how to be a well-behaved woman according to the principles of biblical womanhood. So like how to open our own businesses? No. How about survival skills? Like stealing food from strangers then? Absolutely not. Okay, when do we learn how to deliver the Israelites using only a tent pole and some milk? Child, what has gotten into you? Where are you getting these preposterous ideas from? Welcome to Catholic Central, I'm Gabby. And I'm Nick. Have you ever felt hopeless, abandoned? Betrayed. Every time I call my internet service provider. Well, the next time they put you on a two hour long hold, maybe crack open your Bible. To fill time? <laughs> to be grateful that that's all you have to deal with. There are plenty of stories of women in the Old Testament dealing with, let's just say, much, much worse. Today we'll talk about some of those stories and how they still apply to us so many years later and not just for the ladies. Today we'll be talking patience and overcoming tragedy, loyalty, strength, and faith. First are some stories on patience and overcoming tragedy. For that, we'll start with Naomi and Ruth, found in the Book of Ruth in the Bible. Their story starts in tragedy when Naomi's two sons died. Since her husband had also died, she had no one to provide for her. In ancient Israel, Naomi couldn't just girl boss grind set and start selling leggings to Facebook friends from high school. And there were no social welfare programs for widows or orphans. She didn't have anything, not even food to eat. And no hope of bearing more children, which would have been one of the only ways she could support herself. She even changed her name to Mara, meaning bitter, and lashed out at God for bringing this misfortune on her. As she went to Israel in search of food, she encouraged her two daughters-in-law to stay in Moab to find husbands of their own. One of them, Ruth, insisted on going with her. Even though she was a Moabite, Moabites were excluded from the Jewish community and in Isaiah even called the enemies of God. Since they were on their own and literally starving, Ruth gleaned barley from a field in Bethlehem. Gleaned is a fancy Old Testament word for gathering. It turns out that it's owned by Boaz, a kinsman of Naomi's late husband. He's impressed by Ruth's loyalty to Naomi, following her to a strange land. So he lets them glean all they want and protects her. Ruth eventually marries Boaz and later becomes the great grandmother of King David. So what I'm hearing is that to find my future husband, I should dig through his trash bins for food. Um... Maybe instead let's focus on Ruth's loyalty, generosity, and willingness to face the unknown, and how behind the scenes God is blessing every step in her story. And it pays off to be friends with your mother-in-law. Next up, the story of Sarah. Whose story can be found in Genesis. Sarah, the wife of Abraham, was too old to have a child. Well, at age 90, it sounds like she was too old to do pretty much anything. By 90, you should only really have to worry about what's for lunch. So she laughed when angels told her that she would have a son and then tried to pretend that she didn't laugh. But she did conceive a son, Isaac, who ended up playing a major role in the Abrahamic covenant. He was the father of Jacob. Sarah's story shows us that nothing's too hard for God, who's able to work outside of the laws he created for us. Next, we have another waiting to conceive story with Rachel, also found in Genesis. When Jacob was fleeing his brother Esau, he saw Rachel in a field and went all googly-eyed. Lots of stories about fields and love today. Standing in fields was the equivalent of making a dating profile. Her father, Laban, said that in order to marry her, he needed to work for him for seven years. Which he did. But on their wedding night, Laban sent in her sister, Leah, instead, because he wanted the oldest sister to marry first. <laughs> When Jacob objected, Laban said he could marry Rachel after seven more years of work. So Rachel not only had to wait 14 years to marry the love of her life, she was betrayed by her father and sister. And then, after finally getting married, she couldn't conceive for many years. But she finally conceived Joseph, who became Jacob's favorite son. And future leader of the Jewish people. Can we please talk about some more stories of strength? Yes. Why don't we start with the Book of Esther? The Undercover Queen. 
In ancient Persia, the king Ahasuerus was looking for a new queen Yikes. after his last one disobeyed him. Yikes. Esther was chosen out of all the candidates due to her beauty. Esther's cousin and guardian, Mordecai, had raised Esther as his own daughter, since she didn't have parents of her own. Mordecai offends Haman, the second in command of the king, because he refuses to pay him homage. So Haman plots to have all the Jewish subjects of Persia killed, and tricks the king into letting him, without, without going into too much detail. But Esther foils him by revealing the plans to the king, and herself as a Jew, even though going to the king without being summoned meant she could be killed. The king has Haman executed, and allows the Jews to kill their enemies instead. Not quite a fairy tale ending. But in Persia, royal edicts couldn't be revoked. Well... Esther's story is inspiring, because even though she was at risk of death, she stood up for her people. Now we have Deborah, whose story is in the Book of Judges. Deborah is the only female judge listed in Judges. In her story, she brings Israel back into faithfulness at a time when the Israelites were being persecuted by the Canaanites. She commanded a man named Barak to fight a battle against Sisera, the Canaanite commander. But Barak was too scared, so he asked Deborah to go with him. She went along, but said that because of this, the victory would be in the hands of a woman. Barak did not step up to the plate as Deborah had hoped. So she had the great heroine Jael act as a spy for the Israelites and infiltrate the Canaanites. As Sisera was losing the battle against the Israelites, he fled to the tent of Jael, who drove a tent peg through his skull, thus bringing deliverance to the Israelites. Ouch! And this gave Israel a leg up against Canaan and ushered in a 40-year peace. It's always 40 years. Finally, we have the nameless Proverbs 31 woman. Proverbs 31 describes the wife of noble character, a sort of ideal woman. But curiously, it doesn't describe her staying silent unless spoken to or extol her ability to keep her family's sandals smelling fresh. Instead, she's good in business. Strong, generous to the poor and needy. And lives out her faith in taking care of others. These women aren't just great examples of strength and virtue for women, but for everyone. No matter where we are in our lives, we all might need some perseverance and fortitude. The next time you're tempted to give up, or doubt God's faithfulness or willingness to work in your life, try picking up one of these stories. For Catholic Central, I'm Gabby. And I'm Nick. Be sure to like and subscribe, and let us know which of these stories is your favorite below.